1988, Joseph Campbell and Bill Moyers popularized the phrase, follow your bliss. Well, in the next six and a half minutes, I want to look at with you what that means, why you should really care, and how do you find your bliss so you can follow it. For a lot of men that I know and some women, bliss to them might look a lot like this. However, and by the way, for other people, it would be a handsome man, or it would be a beautiful house up in the North Carolina mountains, or it would be a really fancy sports car, or for somebody like me, a really good dessert. But all of those things are just external things. If you really want to um, relate, yeah, if you want to look like this, that's what I'm trying to say, inside, then you need to get into what bliss, as Joseph Campbell defined it, which is identifying that pursuit which you are truly passionate about and will take you to your fullest potential and serve your community to the greatest possible extent. Now, what is that for you? I don't know. Maybe you want to be a high fashion model who lives in London and Paris and New York. Or maybe you want to herd sheep in New Zealand, the beautiful pastures and mountains there. I don't know what it is for you, but when I wrote the book, I talked to 13 different people who had amazing experiences of bliss and how they got there. For you, it might be working in a lighthouse out in the Outer Banks. It could be flying hot air balloons in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But the next question is, why should it be important to you to find your bliss? Well, we only experience what we express. This is what you could look like if you, on a day-to-day -day basis, are not expressing something that you consider your bliss. We all know people who can brighten up a whole room by leaving. But we also know people who brighten it up by coming in. And if you're following your bliss, you'll be one of the latter. I'd like to introduce you to some of the most selfish people who ever walked the earth. Now you might think I'm a little crazy or blasphemous to say that Moses and Jesus are selfish, but it depends on how you define selfish. If you spell it with a small s, it defines a human ego who only wants to get. That doesn't define Jesus or Moses, nor does it define these more current people that you may know. These are people who spell selfish with a capital S. They want to give from their total self. They want to give into the world, not get. When I was 21, I had no clue what my path to bliss might be. So I took a walk around the Rutgers campus one day, and my bolt from the blue came from a telephone pole. And this particular telephone pole had a flyer on it, as all college telephone poles do. And it said that there would be two people from the General Electric Company in the student union that night talking about sales engineering, which sounded like an oxymoron to me. But I went to that talk, and it led me to my passion which was being a salesperson. <laughs> I sold communication systems to businesses, and I get it, I get it. Most of you would rather chew on aluminum foil than be a salesperson, I get it. But for me, I saw it as a way that I could help a lot of people solve problems, and I love that idea. I always said I never worked a day in my life because I loved what I did. I never said, thank God it's Friday. I never had a blue Monday. I didn't live for the weekends because I was living fully every day. And I'm not saying that sales is for everybody, just like healing the sick in Calcutta is not for everybody. It was simply right for me. For you, you need to find out what floats your boat. In Journey to Bliss, if you happen to pick up a copy, you'll read about a number of different people, a hairdresser, a, a conservationist who worked with the white lions in Africa, uh, a guy who owned a cemetery, a woman who spent all of her time in prisons, some of you already know what your passion is. Some of you are scratching your heads. And you're wondering how you're supposed to find this magic ticket to heaven. Well, there's a couple different approaches. The one way you could start is the left brain. The left brain loves analysis. And I know right now there's a whole bunch of you people out there who love to make lists, right? Don't raise your hands. So you can start by making a list. Make a list of all of the things that you love doing. Then make a second list, all of the things you're really good at. And then make a third list of your skills and talents. And then try and use your imagination to see where do these lists coincide, even if it looks a little crazy. But if you really want to have the world in your hands, then you've got to open up the right brain, the intuitive creative side. By simply paying attention, you can find out what the telephone pole in your life is. Linda Potter wrote a book called Why Won't God Give Me a Sign? 
And in that book, she points out, you know what? We get signs all the time. We simply don't recognize them or we're afraid to act on them. If you're getting a minor fender bender, you might give it some thought as to maybe there's a reason that I'm meeting this person. If you're going home one day and you think, maybe I should go a different way, pay attention to that. Or maybe it's as simple as you hear the same song on your radio. If you still have one like that, let me know. And you hear it four or five times and you think, maybe I should pay attention to the words in this song, see if it has anything to tell me. In 2006, I was wondering what I should do with my life. I took a walk in a park in Colorado and a bush caught my eye. And so I went over to that bush, and I stood and I said, do it! <laughs> and I was expecting it, I really was. I was expecting it to burst into flame, and the voice of God to come out of that and tell me what to do. And you know what happened? Nothing! But, interestingly enough, by the time I got back to my car, my mind and heart had come into a quiet place, and I knew that I should go into the Peace Corps. Now, how do you get to a quiet place? This might be one way. Take a hot bath. A friend of mine likes to go for a run whenever he needs clarity. You might like to go away for a, a romantic weekend with your significant other. However you do it, when you finally find your bliss, it will not be the end. <laughs> but rather, it will be the beginning of a life really worth living. And bliss morphs. I'm not a salesperson anymore. I still love every day of my life. What I find my job is now is just helping people find joy in their lives. So thank you for considering this with me, and may this be a beautiful, blissful day for you.